what we've been led to believe our whole lives in regards to health is truly unfortunate. Eat your fruits and veggies and you'll be healthy. Whole grains are good for you. Avoid red meat. It's going to give you a heart attack. It truly makes me sad when I look around every single day and I see how unhealthy everyone is, especially young people, especially children and babies. That's a whole topic in and itself. We're going to take a look at this young woman's day of eating and see what she could have done from a nutrient density perspective and where she's been led astray. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm here in my kitchen and I've been getting some requests on food that I've been eating and what I eat in a day. Recently I have been cooking every single day, um, every single meal, so this is the perfect time for me to explain to you what I cook and what I eat. You guys ever have someone look at you and you just know like there's not much going on up there? I feel like I'm in that situation right now, but I think you guys know why I chose this young woman. I mean, if we were both thrown in a pool, uh, I could probably hold on to her and those pool noodles that she calls lips will probably keep us afloat and probably other various plastic devices that tend to float in the water that are contained in her body. In the morning, I think it's extremely important to get your protein and recently I'm most likely going to do eggs or I've been loving this oatmeal recipe that I have created and I find it so tasty and so filling and it keeps me full for almost half of the day. Cut oats, I do organic always. They're so good for fiber. So what I do is I boil some water um, and I take some oats and I boil them up and then so I'm going to crack the egg and then when I drain it out, I'm just going to do half and half. This is like this. And you just want to make sure you get all the egg white out. So keep draining until all that's left that you see is just the yolk and all the egg whites are in the bowl. I can't, I can't, I can't. And super easy, I'm just gonna whisk the egg white. <laughs> oh my god. Once the water is boiling, I add the oats into the water and also the egg whites. And I let it sit for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, while the oatmeal is heating up, I like to make a hot lemon water in the morning. It's really good for detoxing your skin and also gives <laughs> you a lot of energy in the morning. <laughs> So I'm just going to take two lemons and basically cut them in half and squeeze them into a cup and add some hot boiling water to that. Doing, doing hot lemon water in the morning is really, really good for detoxing and for energy. It's going to clear you out and really just give you some natural energy resources for the day. You're just going to feel amazing. I always like to add a lot of ingredients to my oatmeal just for flavor purposes and also why not get a little extra vitamins in there if you can. So I'm always adding blueberries, strawberries, definitely honey always. I get these sliced almonds, they're dry roasted unsalted almonds, also organic. And so then I'm going to add all of those ingredients, the blueberries, the strawberries, the honey, um, and the almonds. And that's all I'm going to do for breakfast. I definitely drink coffee. Um, I have an amazing Nespresso machine and it's honestly one of the best things I think I've ever bought. Um, it makes an amazing cup of coffee. And how I sweeten my coffee is I use unsweetened almond milk and honey. Bring sugary flavors into your coffee like creamers and stuff like that. This is going to give you less sugar and... Guys, I've said this before and I will say it again. I would give just about anything to be reborn as a stupidly hot vegan girl with an IQ of like 82. I would just go about as happy as a clam, breeze through life, not a care in the world. I would be so stress-free. It would be amazing. How can someone take an egg and separate the yolk from the white and then consume it without thinking about it? This is what's so crazy to me in the context of our modern world. How crazy is it that 
we are separating the nutrition of the egg because we think that we need to get protein and that cholesterol is bad for us. How how crazy is that? What would indigenous people think of that? You're literally taking away the nutrition. From a logical perspective, why would you take a food and separate it from its natural form? Same thing about eating lean meat. Anyone who's a butcher, anyone who knows what the whole animal is composed of, fat, organs, protein, there's various components to food that occur in nature that it makes sense that we're consuming. It's like people eating lean chicken breast. It doesn't make any sense. On the topic of oats, I did a video on proper oat preparation several weeks ago. Oats are very high in phytic acid. It binds to minerals and takes them out of the body. If you want to consume oatmeal every single day, you need to ferment it for about a week. You put the oats in water, you let them sour. What this effectively does is it lowers the phytic acid content of the food, making it less bad for you, essentially. Oats don't have a high amount of phytase, which is an enzyme that inhibits phytic acid. Uh, so if you added an acid like apple cider vinegar or lemon to the oats to activate the phytase, there's not enough of it to reduce the phytic acid. That's why it has to have such a long fermentation time. Uh, but definitely check out that video if you want to learn more about fermenting oats. Of course, these people don't know these things. These are like indigenous food preparations. This would actually require doing a little bit of research on nutrition. I, I thought it was a little silly how to make hot lemon water. Like, come on, please, please. Uh, she spoke about putting more vitamins in the oats, antioxidants. Uh, there's no vitamins in this meal. There's no substantial vitamin content in this meal. She thinks there is, but unfortunately there is not. None of the foods she's consuming have any significant fat-soluble vitamin content whatsoever. Uh, she put honey in there, but she doesn't really know about raw honey or the importance of consuming high-quality foods. With the almonds, again, high phytic acid intake from nuts, binding to minerals, possibly high omega-6, uh, but she, they're organic. That's okay. As long as they're organic, it's good for you. Uh, and then she put a little bit of almond milk in her tea, I believe. And that's just more phytic acid. People don't really know that these nuts, these seeds, need to be prepared in certain ways to reduce the anti-nutrient content. Uh, I'm not actually sure. I know some almond milk companies do soak their nuts, but <laughs> soak their nuts uh, to, to reduce the phytic acid content. But let's see what she has for lunch. So for moving on to lunch, um, I love avocados. I eat avocados every avocado day. I've I'm ever not seen. adding it to my eggs. I'm adding it to pretty much anything and everything except oatmeal. Um, I love avocado toast. This is such a good, healthy way. I can't to make this up. up for lunch. <laughs> the easiest way to slice an avocado is you cut it in half. Oh, we've seen this a million times. You get the seed out like that. And I basically, I just take my knife and I make lines through the avocado all the way to the end. Then I take a spoon and I start all the way to the skin and basically just get all underneath and I scoop it out. And then I have my avocado pieces ready to use. Yeah. I am not one of those people that is gluten free. I definitely eat my grains. So I use, I always try to get a whole grain bread. Um, this is 21 whole grains with seeds and I find this to be my favorite bread. It's very, very healthy and tastes really good. There's non-GMO, it's organic. Um, the brand is called Dave's Killer Bread and it looks like this. And if you're any if you're anything like me, you love spicy food. So one of my favorite little secret ingredients that I add is some organic chili cayenne. And I just do a little bit because I don't want it to be overpowering. Just about that much. <laughs> add which I I almost add almonds to everything. I just like the texture that they give and they're healthy for you. So I take a little bit of almonds and I put it on top. So I'm just going to put a little bit of freshly ground pepper on top. Uh, 
Um, but this is something that I'll have for lunch. And if it doesn't fill you up, it's always nice to add egg to it because that is going to also give you some more protein. And <laughs> if I started making videos like this, would you guys still watch me? Do I need to get a breast augmentation first? Avocado toast. I cannot make, I, I can't make this up. I really can't make this up. This young lady takes everything at face value. She didn't even know what brand of whole grain bread it was. Maybe she didn't even buy it herself. Maybe someone bought it for her. Oh, it's GMO. It's organic. It's got 37 ingredients in it, but it's good for you. Like, cut, cut me some slack. What are we dealing with? You know, she put a little chili cayenne on there, some a uh, little bit of culinary arts here and there. Uh, puts almonds on it. What what really kind of bugged me a little bit was she said almonds were healthy for you. But if I pressed her to answer this question, what is she going to say? There's healthy fats. That's not true. Rancid omega-6 fats are healthy. There's no significant vitamin content in almonds. And the mineral content is inhibited by the anti-nutrients. Most plant foods are only consumed for energy or survival purposes. Uh, let's let's see what she does next. Midday comes and you've had your lunch and it's not yet dinner time and you kind of have a sweet tooth or you just want something because you just do. Um, and you don't want to drink another coffee because you don't want to drink too much coffee, but you do want a little bit of caffeine. I have been obsessed lately with matcha. Um, I get the organic one from Trader Joe's. Some water and then I'm just gonna take two scoops of this matcha, put it into the water and then I'm going to, again, add some almond milk and some honey. And I'm telling you, this is amazing. It curves my sweet appetite and it definitely gives me a little bit of energy. If I am hungry in between and the matcha isn't doing it for me, I'm just not craving it, I'm wanting something a little salty, I always love to eat hummus and vegetables. So one of my, one of the reasons why I love hummus is they're made out of chickpeas and chickpeas are really, really good for you. This kava spicy hummus that I get at Whole Foods, it tastes amazing and it's such a good snack. And what I'll eat it with, as opposed to eating it with chips or pita or something like that, I eat it with peppers. So I basically, I get organic orange, yellow, and red peppers, and sometimes green, and I just slice them up, and they're the perfect combination with the hummus. They're crunchy, they're juicy, and they taste really, really good. You know, seeing how impressionable this young woman is, one might be inclined to, you know, try to convince her that marrying short Italian men is good for her, but hey, maybe, maybe sometime in the future. The reason she's having these cravings is one, because she's running on a carbohydrate metabolism, and two, there's not enough fat and nutrients in her diet. This isn't exclusive to plant-based people. Even people on a carnivore diet are lacking nutrients if they're not consuming high-quality foods as well as organ meats. The hummus and the vegetables, again, guys, face value stuff. Chickpeas almost have the same nutrient profile as almonds in a sense that they have no significant vitamin content, the minerals are inhibited by anti-nutrients, and they're very, very inflammatory to the gut. Lectins, various things in legumes can cause things like leaky gut syndrome. This face value stuff really drives me crazy. Uh, the vegetables, I mean, there's nothing necessarily too bad about having peppers and hummus, but the point is, there's a lack of nutrient density in her diet. This woman has not consumed any significant nutrient content whatsoever throughout the day. Uh, maybe there was some small amount of vitamin E in the avocado she ate earlier, but that's about it. Now time for dinner. This is the hardest part for me because I love pizza. I love pasta. I love cheeseburgers. I love all that stuff. Um, so I've been finding good alternatives to these things that I love so that I can still have that same taste but not feel as bad or not be worrying about the extra calories or carbs. So my favorite thing these days is eating chickpea or lentil pasta. So if I've, so if I've been doing so much during the day and I'm just working away and I just think I don't, I'm not going super into detail for my dinner. I am a simple girl. I will just make some pasta. Uh, but these noodles I find are so good and they're really good for you. These pow pasta noodles, they're green lentil spaghetti. So power protein pasta. 
So they taste so good and they cook super fast. And honestly, the texture is just like a regular spaghetti noodle. If I don't want the lentils and I want something else, uh, I love mac and cheese. Sorry, I don't. Um, Fancy mac and cheese. So this is chickpea pasta. Um, it's made with chickpeas, pretty self-explanatory. So there's a lot of fiber and good protein for you. This is another good alternative to a gluten pasta. Mung bean. So mung bean makes a great facility pasta. This is something that I'm going to use as well. It's tasty and it gives me the feeling of eating a huge bowl of carbs. <laughs> So if, I'm, so if I'm pretty hungry, I will cook up some chicken and um, the way I cook my chicken is I just cook it on a skillet on the oven. I heat it up really, really hot and I get skinless, boneless chicken thighs and I marinate it with some olive oil and some pepper and some salt and I cook it up and I don't use too much oil or I try not to use too many things to marinate the chicken because that's when you start getting into the calories. So super clean, like, and then I'm going to Seggiano. It's an organic pasta sauce brand, and they have the best flavors. This one is marinara garlic, yum. My favorites are Beata chili because it's spicy, and they have so many flavors, and honestly, they taste so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook up the pasta noodles, and once I drain the noodles, I put them back in the bowl so it stays warm. I add the chicken, I add the pasta sauce, I stir it up. I can't skip my cheese. I have to add my Parmesan cheese. That's going to be my cheat for the day. I don't know what a chickpea smells like, but I'm sure if I was next to this girl, I would. She said she's craving pizza, pasta, cheeseburgers, or that those are her favorite foods. To me, that's an indicator that she's not getting enough calories in her diet, especially evident by what she's eaten throughout the day. And she also thinks that this chickpea or lentil pasta is healthy for you. Far from the truth. We already spoke about the nutritional profile. There's no significant vitamin content in anything this lady's consuming. Then the chicken. Oh, I need skinless, boneless thighs, low-fat dogma, as little oil as possible because you don't want the calories. She is killing herself. She really is. And then she said something about Parmigiano cheese and she has to have her Parmigiano cheese. That's probably what's keeping her afloat. The nutrient content in Parmigiano cheese. Parmigiano Reggiano cheese is a DOP. It's a designation of protection, which means it needs to be made in a certain way. And this way tends to be with very high quality milk. So it's a very nutrient dense source of fat soluble vitamins. But there's a bigger picture here, guys. People need to understand. You can consume as much high quality animal foods as you want. Meat, fat, organs, fish, dairy, eggs, and you won't gain weight. We have to start like Frankie's modeling service or something in the future because I would get some pretty compelling results with these young ladies. For the day. Let's talk about dessert. I'm not a crazy dessert person. I do like some sweets, but I really have to be craving it. But I will say when I do want something sweet, it's really hard because you're like, oh, I've been eating healthy all day. I'm can have one thing, but that's when the habits start to fall off. So you always want to make sure that you, do, if you do have a sweet tooth, and most people do, and they do like to have dessert, after dinner, figuring out what is going to give you that same feeling, not being as unhealthy or full of carbs and sugar. So, I don't have any right now because I don't eat dessert all the time, but I've been finding myself mixing pomegranate seeds, even though there's a lot of sugar, um, but it's not processed at least, pomegranate seeds and oranges, and I mix it them together and it's honestly so tasty and so sweet and just kind of gives me a feeling of I had dessert and yeah so that's kind of what I've been eating in a day I mean I do have different variations I don't do the same thing every day if you guys would like to see some other recipes of some of the other things I do like my egg breakfasts or my salmon dinners um, or my salad lunches just leave a comment below and subscribe and I will definitely be happy to share these things with you kind of what I eat that's kind of how I make it. And I think the key to a diet is being consistent. So having consistency is definitely going to help you reach your goals and feeling better and having a healthy lifestyle. 
By the way, guys, that filter is what she put on the video. I did not put that on there. And the title of this video is What I Eat in a Day to Lose Weight. This, this young lady does not need to lose weight. She needs to eat some vitamins. Uh, I mean, if I was going to place a bet at how long this young lady is going to last on this diet, you know, with access to all the cosmetics she has and surgical procedures, if she did follow this diet, I mean, if you saw her without makeup in a couple years from now, we would see noticeable differences. Uh, but what are you going to do? It, it's really unfortunate. Um, this t always ties back, guys, to nutrient density, food quality, you know, what our native ancestors used to eat, the importance of these high-quality animal foods in our diet is a solution to pretty much every modern problem related to diet. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and share the video. I sincerely hope for the best for this young woman as well as every single other person that I've done a vegan critique on. Uh, it's, it's really in the best interest of their health and improving their lives. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think... So I'm ever going to make a significant impact on these people that are so brainwashed, but who knows? Uh, if you guys want to check out in the comments below is my Amazon shop, a bunch of nutrient dense products ranging from uh, things like vitamin D3 to cod liver oil. Uh, you can check out my Patreon if you guys do have personalized questions. Patreon is a great way to support the channel. I'm on Instagram, guys. I'm on Twitter. If you do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving your overall health, you can do so via email, frankatufano at gmail.com or through the website that's below in the description. On that website is also things like lip balm products, some hygiene products I make from deodorant to tooth powder to hair pomade. Uh, check that stuff out, guys. Uh, but enjoy the rest of your week.